As usual, when it comes to African dealings with the rest of the world, the central theme is always on the continent's resources. And for Niger, it is none other than its uranium, a mineral that is critical to the nuclear industry. According to recent reports from Africa Intelligence, a media hub, the U.S. National Reconnaissance Office and French observation satellites have been monitoring Niger's uranium mines. The question is, why are the U.S. and France interested in Niger's uranium despite the fact that they have been kicked out of the country? Well, both of these countries have their reasons. First, let's analyze France. The simple fact is that uranium is central to France's economic interest in Niger. You see, eight years after independence, France secured privileged access to uranium through a series of agreements. And in return for this access, the leaders in Niger were guaranteed military security and protection from the threat of terrorism and internal threats such as local political opposition. France also added developmental aid as part of the agreement, one which those greedy leaders eagerly signed. And from that time, Niger became an important trade partner to France, exporting uranium to France, which it uses to provide electricity. According to reports, over the last 10 years, natural uranium imported to France came mainly from three countries, Kazakhstan, Niger, and Uzbekistan. In Niger, France established Orano, a multinational corporation, which is 90% owned by France, that is in charge of extracting uranium from Niger for France. This company has exported more than 130,000 tons of uranium since its establishment in the country over 50 years ago. This amount is twice what the nuclear industry has extracted from French mines during the same period. So, as you can see, access to the uranium in Niger is very important to France, and that is why before the recent coup which occurred in Niger, Orano had grown to become a player with huge political and economic influence in Niger, thanks to its networks of lobbies and influence with corrupt government elites. According to a 2013 report, which revealed the true reality of Orano's mining contracts with Niger, the company earned tens of millions of euros by negotiating tax reductions. This was confirmed in 2014, when the president at the time, Mahamadou Isufu, signed a new agreement to lower taxes on mining activities and was immediately offered a presidential jet by the company in return. And, as history has demonstrated time and time again, any leader who wishes to part away from this unequal trade partnership with the former colonial power has found themselves deposed. It happened in 1974, when Hamani Diori was deposed from president through a coup approved by France after demanding an increase in the price of uranium. It happened again 36 years later to President Mamadou Tanja, who was replaced by Mahamadou Isufu. And guess what? Isufu had the perfect CV to serve French interests. He was a former mining engineer who had studied in France and had even worked for Orano. It was during his tenure that the Uranium Gate case occurred, whereby the French company helped to divert around $320 million in 2011 to hide bribes for the Niger elites. Not surprisingly, Isufu was accused of having received no less than $3 million from this financial arrangement. This man allowed France to have easy access to Niger's uranium. Hence, it's no surprise that during his tenure, he was described as a staunch ally of the West. And it's also not a surprise that he handed over to another puppet like him, Mohamed Bazoum, who followed in his footsteps to protect French interests. However, the July coup occurred, Bazoum was removed, and the military government headed by General Tiani entered power. The entrance of the military shook the foundation of France's economic, political, and military interests. Not only did anti-French sentiment spread, but France's influence significantly dropped, and its army was kicked out. Yet, despite this, Orano, a French-owned company, remains Niger's sole uranium producer and is still operating in the country, exporting uranium to France. However, it seems this is about to change because a recent report suggests that Russia's nuclear company, Rosatom, is in talks with the authorities in Niger to take over Orano's uranium assets in Niger. In addition to Russia, China is also preparing to resume uranium mining in the African country after halting its operations for a decade due to falling prices. Now, is the report correct that Russia wants to take over the uranium asset of the French company, Orano? Nobody knows until it actually happens. 
However, the fact is that if it does happen, it will spell trouble for not just France, but also Europe. This is because while France gets 65% of its electricity production from nuclear power, which it needs uranium for, the European Union relies on Niger for about a quarter of their uranium supplies. So, it makes sense that France is actively monitoring Niger's uranium mines. Now what about the United States? Why is it interested in Niger's uranium? Unlike France, which needs Niger's uranium for its electricity production, the United States is monitoring Niger's uranium mine because of Iran. As you well know, Niger ended the status of force agreement which allowed the United States military to set up its base and remain in Niger soil. And a recent report reveals that the United States has begun to withdraw its troops from the country. According to the agreement, the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Niger would be completed no later than September 15, 2024. So, Finally, the U.S. forces would be leaving Niger after stalling and negotiating for ways to remain in the country. But how does this relate to why the U.S. is monitoring Niger mines? Well, if you recall, one of the reasons why Niger ended the defense alliance with the United States was because, during the meeting between the two countries, the U.S. raised concerns about an alleged uranium agreement between Niger and Iran. According to the reports, before this meeting occurred, news published by the Africa Intelligence website, which specializes in African affairs, revealed that Nigerian authorities were secretly negotiating with Iran to sell it 300 tons of concentrated uranium. According to the French newspaper, U.S. intelligence revealed that at the beginning of 2024, secret talks for a deal worth $56 million were made between Niger and Iran. It also added that Russia is responsible for mediating the talks between Niger and Iran due to agreements concluded between Iran and Russia to support the Russian war in Ukraine. However, Niger has since denied the allegations. Speaking to the media, the spokesman of the junta stated that the government of Niger rejects the false allegations of the head of the American delegation to maintain that it has signed a secret agreement on uranium with the Islamic Republic of Iran. Now, whether or not Niger truly struck a secret deal with Iran for its uranium is not exactly clear. What is, however, clear is that the United States doesn't want Iran to have access to uranium, which it intends to use for its nuclear missile. Recall that Iran is currently under sanctions, which have severely limited its option of having access to uranium. There is a point, however, that we would like to bring up. The same reports and accusations flying around that Niger is trying to sell uranium to Iran are similar to what happened in 2003, which led to the U.S. invasion of Iraq. And, as we all know, after about 100,000 lives were lost, it was revealed that those reports were false. In fact, they were forged, printed on obsolete Iraqi and Niger letterheads, citing officials who were no longer in power at agencies that had been disbanded. According to the forged document Iraq tried to purchase, 500 tons of yellow cake uranium powder from Niger. So, if those documents were forged, why can't these reports be false as well? After all, the report was published by French newspapers, and we all know that France also has an interest in Niger's uranium. The fact that the report even says that Russia is acting as a mediator in the uranium agreement between Niger and Iran makes it even more suspicious because both Niger and Iran are sovereign countries that have good relationships and can discuss any agreement without an external party. So why do they need Russia as a mediator? That report might just be propaganda by the US or France to cast Iran, Niger, and Russia in a bad light. But at least the US is not charging fast to invade Iran just because of a report that might be fake, just like it did in 2003. So you can see why the United States is monitoring Niger mines. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.